I'm Matt. I'm Kerry. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. We've seen a lot of different versions of these sides. Everything from the comics, to the movie, and the ones we saw in the Daredevil Netflix series. I'm a pretty old school comic fan, so I want to lean towards those. We're going to do basically historical ones with a little bit of that comic book flair. There's many different ways to forge these sides. Most people will do them in three separate pieces, or at least two separate pieces. But Ilya, you all know him, he's an overachiever. He wants to do it all in one piece. So the first step is to go ahead and flatten his square stock down. Now that he has the square stock flattened, he has to separate it into three equal pieces. He's going to use a hot cut tool underneath the power hammer to achieve this. Now that he has his flattened bar divided in three equal sections, it's time to bend the side tines out of the way and start drawing out that central one. He's going to do this at first on the flat dies, then he's going to move to using a spring die that has two circular indents on the top and bottom die. It also assists him when he tapers out the tine. He's now placed the center tine through the Pritchett hole, and he's pounding on the back of the bar. This creates a nice flat section where all three pieces come together. Because the sigh is a very complicated piece, one has to go and move each segment in and out of the way as you're working with an alternating part of the piece. One of the better ways to draw out such a thin piece is to use a set of round swages because they perform the same function except they do not disrupt the piece, making it move side to side or flatten it out too much. Ilya's happy with the design here for the size, so we're gonna go in here right now, clean it up on our slack belt before we head to the bigger sanders. All right, now I've gone through, cleaned up the insides of our size here. Now I'm gonna go through with our 24 grit, hog out this material in the middle so I can match it to the inner. And then I'm also gonna sharpen off the points to our size as well. Now that Bill has some of the inside tricky radiuses cleaned up, he's going to start forming the pommel. The pommel's pretty basic, he just has to square it off and then break the corners. So our first sigh is pretty much to shape. Looks great. Ilya really wanted to forge the second sigh the same way he did the first one, but he's super busy right now on some other really important projects this season. 
So I'm gonna take this opportunity to show you a completely different technique using as many modern tools as possible. My first goal is I'm gonna take this bar of W1. You can see I already started tapering it out a little bit. I'm gonna to go to our modern iron kiss hammer, taper this out for our central spike, and then gonna use some half by half, do a little tapering here, forge our side pieces, then we're gonna weld them all together, blend in the area that's welded, show you guys another modern way to make these. Now that my spike is forged out to length, I'm gonna flip it around and start on the handle. Now that both sides are tapered out about the same and I broke the corners, I'm gonna heat each end up individually, give them the shape that I need over the horn of the anvil, check the original pattern as I go. Once I'm done one side, I'll quench it, flip it around, do the other one. Unlike some size you've seen, these are not bladed weapons. These are made for defense. They're primarily batons with two side pieces made for binding another person's blade or other weapon. So you won't be seeing us forge out a blade. These are gonna be spikes tapered out. And like I said, these are defensive weapons. After forging, I'm just gonna use a wizard to remove this material from the bar, and then go straight to the sanders and true up my handle portion. My main goal is to define the pommel area and to smooth out the transition where the two side pieces are gonna be attached. The big advantage of doing this type of construction is I can completely clean my parts before they go together I don't have to do much on the slack sander afterwards. All right, so I'm getting ready to weld this one up. I'm just comparing my measurements to the original one. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and weld the first one on. Then I'll put in a lot of fill to create these radiuses like over here. Normally you wouldn't have to worry about that too much, but since we're making a pair, we want them to match. Little sanding, little blending, we'll be good to go. After truing up the shape on my pommel, it's time to get our first comparison side by side. I think they match up pretty darn good considering they were both made by hand without any jigs. We'll just do a few final touches here and there and then on to the demos. So I didn't realize Ilya pulled a fast one on all of us, of course. He forged his side out of some air hardening material so after forging, he just heated his whole piece up and let it cool, it's nice and hard. Mine's W1 steel, and it's pretty big in here, so I'm not too worried about getting the whole thing hot, but I do wanna get this in heat treated, so when we go in the demos and we really punch on some stuff, it won't warp, bend, or break. So I'm just gonna heat it up to a dull red, quench it in oil. Now that the side has been hardened, we have to make sure it's usable. Carrie's gonna place it into the oven and let it sit for a few hours. After that, it'll be good and tough and ready to take on anybody in Hell's Kitchen. On most sides, you don't see much of a handle wrap. In this case, we're gonna use some red silk 
and do a simple spiral down. This will give us a better grip and give us that classic red Electra look. Click here to subscribe or click here to watch more episodes. Thanks for watching Man at Arms Reforged. We need to know what you want the guys to build, so tell us in the comments below what weapons you want to see next.